The most commonly used work holding device for the lathe is the chuck. Chucks come in two varieties, universal and independent, and can have two, three, four, or six jaws. Collets are also very commonly used for their speed and accuracy. Universal chucks are chucks where all the jaws move at the same time when the key is turned. They're excellent for being able to chuck a wide variety of diameters quickly. However, they will never clamp in the same place twice. This means if you machine a diameter, take the part out and rechuck it, and then machine the second side at the exact same crossfeed setting, your two cuts will not be concentric to each other. Hopefully you can see on camera that there's a significant step right there in the middle. On even the best quality chucks, the most accuracy you can hope for with universal chucks is around three thousandths of an inch runout. Runout is defined as the deviation from the actual center line of the lathe spindle, and that's expressed as total indicated runout, or TIR, meaning the deviation from either side of center line. For example, 15 thousandths TIR would be a deviation of seven and a half thousandths on one side or the other. It's not uncommon for cheaper chucks and old worn out chucks to have a lot more run out than just three thousandths. As long as you know this limitation though, you can work around it doing all of your machining in one setup. If your part has loose concentricity tolerances or none at all, then universal chucks are generally the fastest method of work holding for the lathe. Universal chucks are available in two, three, four, or six jaws, with three and six being the most common. Independent chucks are chucks where each jaw can be moved individually via its own screw. This allows you to dial a part in to any degree of concentricity that's required. With a little practice, you can very easily attain half a thousandth total indicated runout within a couple of minutes. Since each jaw moves independently of the others, you can also use these chucks to hold parts eccentrically, for instance, when you're machining a cam. Independent chucks are most often four jaw chucks, so they can be used for machining square and rectangular stock as well. The main limitation for these chucks is speed. They're somewhat labor intensive to set up, and they have to be dialed in every single time a part is chucked. By far, at least in the United States, the most commonly used type of collet used on the lathe is the 5C collet. 5C collets are available to hold round, hex, and square stock, and have a round capacity from 1 32nd of an inch up to inch and an eighth. Machinable collets are also available for making special fixtures or sizes that are not commonly available. 5C collets are very accurate, generally holding within half a thousandth of total indicated runout, and they're very quick to use on multiple parts of the same diameter. Collets can also be outfitted with stops, so multiple identical parts can be machined quickly without having to establish a reference surface for each part. On the downside, they have a limited clamping range of only about five thousandths of an inch, so the part must be very close in size to the collet diameter. And it also takes time to change collets so different diameters can be held. There are other types of collets available to use on lathes that have either different holding styles or larger or smaller capacities, but 5C collets are the most widely used by a very large margin. In addition to these work holding methods, one can also bolt large irregular work pieces like castings and forgings directly to a faceplate, which is a flat plate with slots for mounting bolts. When placing your part on the faceplate, you get it roughly centered using the concentric rings machined into the face. Faceplate work is generally off balance when the lathe is running, so care should be taken to either place counterweights on the opposite side of the faceplate to balance the load, or just run the lathe slowly. Turning between centers entails having a center in both the headstock and the tailstock, and the workpiece is driven by a lathe dog, which is bolted to the part and has a tail that rides against either a chuck jaw or one of the slots on a faceplate. The part will have a center hole drilled in each end. The advantage of turning between centers is that the part can be removed again and again and the centers will always locate it back to the lathe axis, ensuring that the part is concentric. 
Turning between centers can also be used to turn tapers by purposely offsetting the tailstock one direction or the other. That'll be the subject of a future video. Turning between centers is not done very much anymore. It used to be a lot more widespread. But there are some very notable uses for it, such as turning electric motor shafts. All of those things, the bearing journals, the rotor of the motor itself, all have to be concentric. So turning between centers is a fantastic way of doing that. It's also a very good way of cutting multiple start threads. You can put your part in there, cut one thread while it's bearing against one of the chuck jaws, then take your part out, make it bear against the next chuck jaw, and cut the thread again, and then at that point you just move it to the next chuck jaw and cut your last thread and you end up with triple starts. You could of course use a four jaw or a six jaw to get more options on the number of starts. The textbook method of turning between centers involves putting a center in the spindle of the machine. You would then install your faceplate and drive the lathe dog using the slots in the faceplate. Of course, my lathe dog doesn't actually fit inside these slots, but uh, ignore that, okay? A much simpler method is to just put a piece of scrap steel in your chuck and angle your compound to 30 degrees then use that to cut a center point onto that piece of scrap. The point is guaranteed to be concentric to the center line of the spindle and the part can be installed onto the new center and just driven off of the jaws of the chuck. The piece of scrap can then just be put into your toolbox when you're not using it and anytime you put it back in just be aware that you'll need to recut the point to make sure that it's concentric with the lathe axis. This can just be a skim cut since you've already got most of the material already removed, so it doesn't take very long to touch it up at all. When you're changing out chucks, you really want to do something to protect the ways of the machine. These are the precision surfaces, and you don't want them getting dinged up if the chuck should fall. Chucks can be very heavy, so it's a good idea to take a piece of plywood and put it down on the ways in case the chuck should fall when you're taking it off. It's also a good idea to have two hands on it at all times in case it should get away from you. This is a threaded spindle, but there are multiple different methods of attaching a chuck to the lathe spindle, such as cam locks or the long taper spindles. Regardless of how the chuck attaches to the spindle, you really want to make sure that everything is nice and clean, especially on a threaded spindle. You don't want any chips on the inside of the threads that could potentially cause concentricity errors. Likewise, you want to make sure that every mating surface on the chuck is clean as well. Again, especially on threaded spindles where those chips can get all inside and cause a lot of problems. Before we move on to the tool portion of this video, I'm trying to clear up a little something and I'm hoping you guys can help. I have two dogs, Iggy and Chacho, and I can't figure out which one's cuter. I figure I can get your help by having you guys vote on it. To vote for Iggy, press the like button down below. If you'd rather vote for Chacho, hit that subscribe button instead. If you can't decide between the two, just go ahead and hit them both. Tools can be held in either the tool post or the tail stock. The vast majority of tooling will be held in the tool post, and you can do a wide variety of operations on the lathe. Quick change tool posts are widely used in industry because multiple tools can be set up on center and ready to use. Each tool is held in its own holder which mates to the tool post. The holders all have adjusting screws to set the center height of the tool. The holders are changed out by loosening a cam on the tool post and sliding one holder off and the next one on, which greatly increases productivity on jobs that require multiple tools. I have a video specifically about quick change tool posts and I'm going to put a card right here linking to that video. Like I said, there are a lot of different types of operations that you can perform on the lathe. Facing is cutting on the end of the workpiece to produce a flat end or cut pieces to length. Turning is cutting on the diameter of the workpiece. Boring is just like turning except it's on the inside of a hole and it enlarges the diameter. This of course requires pre-drilling. Threading is used for cutting screw threads, either externally or internally. Knurling is an operation that produces a surface that can easily be gripped as a handle, and the knurl can be straight, angled, or diamond-shaped. 
Knurling usually displaces metal rather than cutting it, although cut knurling tools do exist. Grooving is used for cutting recesses for O-rings or retaining rings. This can be either exterior or interior, or actually on the face as well. Parting is used to cut a part off from the rest of the stock. You should always use plenty of oil when you're parting, and in general I try to feed by hand so I've got a sense of feel while I'm doing it. That way you can really tell what the tool is doing. If the part's hollow like this one, I usually try to catch the part on a piece of stock or a screwdriver. You can hold it in the drill chuck if you need to. And that way it doesn't go dinging off the ways or uh, flying off into the ether after it releases from the parent stock. The tail stock can hold a multitude of different taper shank tools such as drill chucks, taper shank drills, reamers, and counter bores, and all sorts of different centers. You have your regular type of live center as well as the extended point or CNC point which I really like because it gives you a lot of extra tool clearance at the end. And then you have the bullnose center which is used for supporting pipe and large diameter tubing. All of these tools have Morse tapers which is a self-holding taper. To seat it you just give it a firm smack into the tailstock quill and it'll hold just fine. In addition to live centers, there are also dead centers, which do not rotate. They're just a solid chunk of steel, whereas the live center rotates with the workpiece. Dead centers are really not used very much anymore. Nowadays, they're mostly used in the headstock when you're turning between centers. They're also sometimes used on the mill to support a longer workpiece when you're using a dividing head. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to cast your votes for Chacho using the subscribe button or Iggy using the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.